Hey guys, what's going on? Adam Snyder here with The Homemade Entrepreneur. So today I just want to tell you guys about where you can source, what places to go to, when to go, and just how to do it. So let's get to that. So the first place that I want to talk about is a thrift store. Thrifting. How do people make money in a thrift store? You know, this is a great place to get any inventory, and this is actually something that I have been developing, not really developing, but putting together, creating, um, you know, a course on thrifting, on making money at the thrift store. And this is primarily, or actually it's only for Amazon FBA, but a thrift store, doing any type of thrifting, you can make money selling stuff on Amazon. You can make money selling stuff on eBay. There's many places you can sell the inventory that you buy at a thrift store. The nice thing about a thrift store is you can sell a lot of products. You can buy a lot of stuff. They have a huge variety and the prices are very cheap. So thrifting, when do I go to thrift stores? The main times I go to thrift stores are Saturday, Monday, and Thursdays. Those are my main days. I like those days mainly because Saturdays, that's when they're bringing out more stuff. They usually have more employees working at a thrift store, especially Goodwill, Salvation Army. Those are the days they have more employees working so they get more stuff out throughout the day, which is great. Um, the reason I go on Mondays, and I usually go Monday right about 10 to 12 o'clock, something like that, uh, because that's when they're bringing out a lot of the stuff from the weekend. Uh, on Sundays, it's usually not as busy. They don't get as much done. They're trying to get stuff organized, and then Monday is when stuff usually hits the floors. And so I don't go at 9 o'clock when most of the Goodwills and thrift stores and Salvation Army is open. I usually wait about an hour because then the employees are still pushing out the, the new tubs, the new carts, and so you'll get a lot of great stuff then. So the next place I like to go to are retail stores, which we call retail arbitrage. The nice thing about retail arbitrage is you can hit up a lot of stores because just like thrift stores, you can go to the store, the thrift store and you can find you know some good deals. Retail stores, let's say you go to Walmart. How many Walmarts are there you know, within a 50 mile radius of your house? How many Targets are there? How many Home Depots, Kohl's, Lowe's, um, the Dollar Store, Big Lots, Macy's, you know, Targets, uh, you know, Office Depot, I, I could just keep going and going with the list of retail stores, but use retail stores. You can make a lot of money with retail stores. This is what I used to scale up my business in the very beginning. So I started with thrifting and it was going good. I was selling a little bit on eBay and then I got into Amazon and I was like, okay, you know, this is, this is pretty easy. How can I scale my business? Retail arbitrage, that's how you do it. You can make a lot of money, but you need to be out there scanning. You need to know what you can buy at what price and how much money you can make. Because let's say you find a toy, you can buy for $5, it sells for $25 on Amazon, you're make, gonna make a little bit over $10 per toy. If you can go to every single Target within a 50 or 100 mile radius of your house and buy you know dozens of these, why not do it? It's that simple. So I hope you didn't mind online arbitrage. I didn't feel like spelling out arbitrage, uh, mainly because my writing's terrible. But Online arbitrage is just like retail arbitrage, except it's online. The beauty of this, you can do it all from the comfort of your home. You can do it with sitting in a chair. You can do it, you know, nice air conditioning. Right now, it is like 101 degrees outside, which is not extremely hot, but it's very, it's uncomfortable. Okay, so I'm doing a little bit of online arbitrage today because I don't want to be outside doing any retail arbitrage, going from a nice air conditioning car to you know out into the heat and then back into the cold i just don't like doing that so online arbitrage what i do um so what i do with online arbitrage that most people don't do i'm doing this every single day not just when i have a slow day i do online arbitrage every day i like to see packages come into my house to the office wherever get into the prep center i like seeing that on a daily basis when that happens you see more consistency in sales you see your business grow that is very important so online arbitrage, do I do it? Yes, I do, every single day. Make sure you're at least getting one purchase in every single day, and then you're gonna start to see your business grow, I guarantee it. So, one thing I forgot to answer about retail arbitrage, when do I do retail arbitrage? Retail arbitrage, I mix it in on Saturdays with my thrifting. I also do it on um, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. 
and I like to mix it up like that. Um, I don't go on Sundays only because you're getting more of the families, you're getting people there just doing like regular shopping, um, the lines are a little bit bigger so I don't do retail arbitrage on Sundays because of that. But if I'm out of town and I'm you know next to a retail store, I will hit up a retail store. I'm not just gonna pass it off and and uh, you know not realize all the profits that are inside that store just because you know there's you know a few families there shopping. So just keep that in mind. So another great place to do your sourcing is at a pawn shop. A lot of people overlook pawn shops because pawn shops have a bad reputation. Which when I first started, I thought a pawn shop was pretty much just where people you know pawn their junk come back and get it later. I didn't realize how much quality products, how much you know valuable products they have inside a pawn shop until I started going. Nice thing about a pawn shop is they will negotiate the prices. So get in there, negotiate the prices, get yourself a profitable item. It's actually that simple. When do I go to pawn shops? Pawn shops I don't go to as often as retail stores or thrift stores. And the reason for it is because the, the more you go, um, yeah, you might be able to find more, but the problem is you're going to see the exact same stuff. So I usually wait. I go to local pawn shops about every two weeks um, for out of town pawn shops. If I'm there, I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit the pawn shop, see what they have, see if I can make some money and just negotiate. So, um, it's pretty much when I have time and when, um, let's say it's like out of town pawn shop, I haven't been there in a month. I'm going to go to that pawn shop. If I was just, I was just at the pawn shop. Last week, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that unless I know they they have a lot of stuff uh, fast turnover because then they might have new stuff coming in. They might be marking other items down, and if they're marking stuff down and I can negotiate, it'll just be a better deal for me. Okay, so now we got yard sales or garage sales or you know I don't know what you call them. home sales, estate sales. They're pretty much all the same thing. Um, in my book, they're pretty much all the same thing. You can make money going to these things. And a lot of people think that yard sales, there, you know, there's no money in it. There's a lot of money in yard sales. You can make a lot of money because all the items the people are wanting to get rid of, they're not trying to get top dollar for everything. They will negotiate. So let's say you have, you know, so for example, I went to a yard sale um, just this past weekend, ended up buying a new camera. So they had a they had a Canon 70D. I, you know, I would have shown it to you. It's actually what I'm using right now, but um, or same. Uh, camera that I'm using right now but um, as soon as I got it I actually put it up on on Amazon and it sold within about three hours um, sold merchant so I actually that was one of the items I did merchant fulfilled um, but yeah uh, ended up making about uh, 200 and 200 some dollars off this thing so this camera I went I went to a, a yard sale they had all this stuff they had a lot of photography stuff um, a lot of the stuff was were things I didn't want couldn't use uh, the guy like did his own prints, um, whatever had all the liquids and anyway. So uh, he had this camera. So um, which I'm not, I don't know exactly why, but anyway. So he had this camera. He was selling it for $400. Um, it came with the lens, had the camera. $400 for his camera was a great deal to begin with. I actually bought this camera for $275. Um, so $275 at a yard sale. Didn't have to pay tax on it. It worked. Um, I, I tried everything or is pretty much everything that I could on the camera um, that I knew how to mess with so uh, you know it was a quality camera um, so end up make I'm end up making probably like 80% ROI on this thing but uh, it was a great deal I could not find this at a pawn shop I looked at pawn shops for these cameras all the time for this particular camera the 70d the 80d the 6d um, always look for those so I was able to find this one at a garage at a yard sale same thing uh, but just be on the lookout for stuff like that. So, yard sales. What do I look for when I go to yard sales? The main thing are electronics, um, games like video games, um, books, CDs. CDs I can find. Usually I can get like 10 CDs for a dollar. Um, sometimes even less than that. A lot of times people have like one dollar per CD. It's like, you know, you know you're never going to listen to the CD ever again. Why not just get rid of it? I'm going to give you a dollar if you give me 10 of them. And that's it. You know, 10 cents per CD is usually what I'm paying, but a lot of times I can get like a whole box of CDs for, you know, a couple bucks. Um, sometimes, one time actually I got a, a box full of CDs for 50 cents, which was a great deal. They wanted $5, I said I'd give them 50 cents. They took it, they didn't want it, and that was, it was at the end of the yard sale. So, um, 
which leads leads me to when do you go to yard sale? When should you go? My advice to you is to go Fridays. If the yard sale is open on Friday or Saturday morning, go early. Make sure you're one of the first people there because they might have that you know hidden gem that you know other people will see and it's gonna go quick. So if you can find that, buy it. You can make some money very quickly with stuff that other people are out there looking for. Another thing is go at the end of the yard sale. So let's say it's over on Saturday evening or Sunday evening. Go that day because then by going that day, the nice thing about it is that a lot of times they'll just give you stuff. And so, um, you know, go that day, you're gonna see that not only are you getting stuff for free, you're getting stuff extremely cheap, um, you know, which is awesome. So the last thing I wanna talk about, which I'm not gonna write up on the board, I'm not really gonna talk about too much because uh, you know, there's a little bit more risk involved, a little more to it than just going out and uh, finding stuff, but is um, private label and wholesale. Those are two great methods that you can use to source inventory, but the problem is it takes a little bit more time, takes a little bit more capital, and uh, it's not something that just, you know, anybody just starting out can do. So just keep that in mind. Those are other options as well. You know, go check out my Amazon FBA training course. It's a great course. I highly recommend it. You will learn a lot. Um, go to gumroad.com slash homemade entrepreneur. The link will be in the description below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you learned anything at all. And uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video. How right, you guys take care.